In today's video, we're going to be looking at how we set up background removal in Not. Welcome back to The Hive School, where we make videos to help you one-up your live event production workflows. If you've noticed more content from The Hive School lately, that's fantastic. It means our videos are finally reaching our target audience. However, maintaining a consistent release schedule that satisfies the YouTube algorithm while balancing doing production work and getting in some family time has been quite challenging. Despite careful planning, something was bound to disrupt our schedule eventually, and this week I haven't managed to get it into the studio to record the session that we had planned for you. To avoid dropping our recent streak, I'm recording this week's Hive School video while traveling, as you can see from the backdrop, which is a little bit different from the one that you're probably used to seeing. There's also a really busy road just outside where I'm recording, so let's see if we can get through this without too many disruptions. Last week we held our first Office Hours live stream. A big thank you to all of you that came out for it. If you want to check out what we got up to, then it's now on the channel for you to rewatch. We only streamed for an hour and we made a promise that any of the questions or topic suggestions that we didn't get around to, we would record for a tutorial or get back to in future live sessions. Our friend JJR45, I hope I pronounced that correctly, asked the question, can you explain how to have multiple video inputs from disguise into different elements of the same notch layer? Showing you how NVIDIA background removal works between notch and disguise feels like a really great way to answer this question and also show you something fun in the process. It's worth mentioning right at the front that this is only going to work if you've got an NVIDIA RTX graphics card. So depending on what hardware you're running, not everyone's going to be able to follow along with this. Before we can dive either into Notch or Disguise, we need to make sure that we have all the prerequisite libraries from NVIDIA installed to make everything work. Start by heading over to the NVIDIA Broadcast Download Resources page. I'll stick a link to this below in the video description. You'll see if you scroll down the page, there's nine download links, and which one you need is going to depend on which card you've got installed. I know that I have an NVIDIA 4090 in mind. However, if you're not sure, search for Device Manager in your Start menu and take a look under Display Adapters heading, and that should tell you which card you have. We don't need the Audio Effects installer, but grab the downloads for the Video Effects and AR SDKs. Let's get those installed too. Honestly, that's the part of the process that I've found to be the biggest sticking point in getting this all to work. If you're using a consumer grade card like I am, then the labeling on the NVIDIA download site is pretty clear. However, if you've got a workstation card like an A6000, working out which generation that card is, is slightly less easy. While I was researching this video, I wasn't able to find a satisfying table that showed all the different generations of cards. But it's worth remembering that the 20 series cards are Turing architecture, 30 series are Ampere, and 40 series add a Lovelace. So if you can work out which architecture your workstation card is running, then it's probably not going to be too hard to match up with the labeling on the NVIDIA download site. Now you've done that, let's head into Notch. This is a fairly simple effect to set up. You're going to want a video loader to bring in your camera. This will need to be exposed so you can pass your video input from your media server into your block. Make sure you give it a descriptive name like camera input so we know what we're patching later. While we're developing this look, I'm just going to add a video that I've downloaded from Storyblocks. However, you could easily use your webcam by supplementing the video loader with a video in-source. Let's take a copy of that camera image by passing it into a video null. I'm going to add a background removal node as a child of that video null. The NVIDIA background removal node generates a map that you can use as an alpha image later. We'll need an image 2D no node in order to output this effect. Connect the clean camera into the video input and the mat into the alpha image. However, the original question was how to manage a notch block with multiple inputs, and right now, we only have one input exposed for our camera input. 
So let's add another video loader to bring in the background for our cutout person, creating the ultimate awful zoom background. As before, we'll need an image 2D for this to render, and we must ensure the correct stacking order so that our background appears behind the cutout. Remember to hit the question mark and we'll expose this input. Let's give it a descriptive name like background. This will help us clearly distinguish between inputs when we move to disguise. Before we export this for disguise, I wanted to show you a different video that I've pulled down from Storyblocks. This time it's a guitarist. You'll see that compared to the other file I was using, this one works a lot less well for background removal, and the main body of the player is phasing out at times. What I wanted to draw your attention to here is that the background removal node is not a silver bullet, and while it's doing, what it's doing is pretty magic, especially because it's managing to cut out our subject from the background without relying on the color key, but if your footage isn't well lit or that the background is pretty busy, then the results can break down quickly. To bring this all into the skies, we need to go up to the project menu and then select export for media server. The .dfx DLL that we've exported can now be placed into the not file folder inside our disguise project structure. Having opened Disguise, let's create some video layers that can contain the contents that we use to develop our block. Like before, let's use those descriptive names, so that's camera input and then background. Of course, we also need to add a notch layer in order to load our block too. To send the image from the video layer to the notch layer, hold the Alt key on your keyboard and drag from the video layer to the notch block. You'll know that this works when you see a white arrow appear. Repeat this process for your background video layer and you'll see you've got two white arrows pointing to your notch layer. Now let's left click on our notch layer and make sure that the layers have been correctly mapped to each exposed input. Where it says camera input arrow and background arrow, you can left click there and select the right one if you need to. So this is it. We've created an absolutely terrible zoom-like fake background, and we've, but we've done it with some pretty interesting tech that's available for you to build into your next show design. It doesn't really fill me with joy to leave you with these uninspiring results. So what I've decided to do at the end of this tutorial is show you a couple of examples of how I've used background removal in some of my recent production work. This effect was created for the most recent Becky Hill tour for the track Gecko. A big thank you to Studio Moros for bringing us in to help produce some of the notch looks, and to Sam Lisher who collaborated on producing many of them. What I'm doing here is taking the cutout image of the subject and running it through a slit scan and a frame delay in order to give this really full on chopped up look. Now let's look at one that's currently being used on the Avenged Sevenfold tour. Because we were finding that we weren't always getting the front light to get the perfect cutout of the guys, I've mixed the background removed image with the clean camera signal so we never completely lose them. I've affected the cutout image so that when it phases out we get this smouldering embers kind of feel to it. There's definitely loads more that you can do with background removal creatively it, and I just really wanted to show that it could be a lot more exciting than making terrible webcam filters. If you followed along with this tutorial then we'd love it if you'd share what you've been making with us in the show and tell channel on our new Hive School Discord. Links below on how to join that. By now, I'm sure you know how to help boost what we do within the YouTube algorithm. So join in if you feel like we've earned it. We'll see you next week, hopefully back in the high school studio. Many thanks.